people think nuclear... The renewable sector, the renewable sector generate, has gone... The, the, generate the a question, a Hinkley point... We'll see in this country. You aren't going to give us that base provision that gives us the industrial uh, underpinning that we require. Good morning, everybody. And can I start by thanking Michael at the, the Sunday Times Scotland um, and Claire and Cam for the opportunity to take part today. I'm very keen to repay uh, some of the support that we've had from, from Brodies over the years at Scottish Renewables. Uh, people like Neil Collar and Keith Patterson, for example, have contributed a huge amount to, to our work to support the growth of renewables in Scotland over the last few years. Now, not surprisingly, I'm going to focus my uh, five minutes, if I stick to my five minutes, uh, on renewables. Um, and I want to talk really about the short, the medium, and the long-term uh, prospects for the future of the sector. The short term is uh, pretty easy. Uh, I think we're going to see uh, a real continuing rush within the sector uh, to develop. There's a, there's a series of deadlines for existing government support schemes uh, which are going to expire over the next uh, year or so and uh, developers are in a race against time to get their schemes uh, built up and running and generating electricity before those deadlines uh, expire. Uh, so at the moment we are seeing uh, people coming into the sector, uh, we're seeing more investment come into the sector, but beyond the next 12 to 18 months there's a huge amount of uncertainty for the future prospects of the sector and that's because of the changes to support schemes uh, at Westminster. However, the good news, I mean, Mark's uh, colleagues in government in Holyrood set a target for the renewable sector in Scotland to generate the equivalent of 100% of Scotland's electricity demand by 2020. And we're not in a position anymore to meet that target. We're simply not going to have the capacity to meet that target. But our latest estimates are that we'll be somewhere around about 85%. And I think if you go back 10 years and had asked our sector, people that worked in the energy sector, uh, people at government, could Scotland get anywhere near those kind of levels, the answers would have been an unequivocal no. Uh, so I think the growth of the sector and the scale of growth of the sector over the last 10 years has been very much uh, a success. And we've got way beyond where people would have expected us to get. So as I've said already, there's huge uncertainty ahead, yet the overall macro debate about energy and climate change is positive. So the UK government has said it is absolutely committed to working within future climate change targets. Those are for an approximately 50% reduction in carbon emissions between now and 2030. Mark's party's manifesto has pledged that the SNP, if elected as the next government of Scotland, will put in place a similar target uh, for Scotland. And our analysis suggests, and, and, and people have told us this is consistent with their own analysis, that means something like a doubling of renewable electricity capacity across the UK from today to 2030. Um, and in Scotland, it means us getting from a situation where renewables will provide something like 25% of Scotland's energy, overall energy needs in 2020, to a situation where our sector will contribute roughly 50% of Scotland's energy needs by 2030. So I'm sure you're all thinking, you know, how on earth do we get to those kind of, uh, that kind of scale of a renewable energy sector? Um, and actually, you don't need to look far for an answer because Sweden, which is Europe's leading uh, country in terms of renewables deployment, Sweden has already got there with over half of all its energy use across heat, power and transport coming from renewables. So to some extent, there's a template there for us to follow. But the focus has to be very clearly on uh, decarbonizing heat use. Over 50% of our energy use is for heat and decarbonizing transport, which is over 20% of our energy use. And of course, until now, the focus has been almost solely on decarbonizing electricity. So in transport, that means electric vehicles. It may mean things like hydrogen vehicles. It will mean a growth in things like biofuels. In terms of heating, it will mean a growth in electric heating, uh, things like uh, heat pumps, uh, looking at models from the past and to some extent in terms of storage of heat. It will mean growth in biomass, which is one of the key elements of what Sweden has done, is biomass uh, district heating. Um, and also very much focusing on using, for example, waste heat um, or uh, waste to energy, for example, as again as a way of providing heat in Swedish cities. So the long and the short of it is, 
uh, sorry, one last thing, and, and that's so growth in, in renewable heat and renewable transport and low carbon heat and low carbon transport and continued transition within our power sector. And that will mean new capacity of all forms of renewable power. Um, but also things like repowering our existing portfolio wind farms, which will mean additional capacity from the same sites. Now that's looking into, into the 2020s and I think the key thing for the power sector is that will only happen if renewables can generate at lower cost than they do at the moment and if they can compete, first of all, with other forms of low carbon generation, such as nuclear, and if they can compete ultimately with electricity generated from gas with the, with the carbon price factored in to that. And I think that's the model we're moving to. We're moving away from a model where renewable power has been subsidized to promote investment and growth in the sector uh, to a situation where I think the UK government is likely to, to announce later this year, we move to a carbon price which will uh, underpin the framework for investment in renewable energy in the future. Just a, a, a couple of wider points before I finish, and I think it's been clear from all the party manifestos um, that the debate in Scotland is moving away from renewables being seen as an end in themselves and renewable targets being seen as an end in themselves to actually renewables being clearly understood for what they are, and that is a means to an end of the wider challenge of decarbonisation. And I think we're seeing signs finally of a, of, a, of a joined up approach to the energy sector, and people actually looking at our energy system as a whole. So whoever is elected, we're going to see a massive focus on energy efficiency, for example, and people really getting serious about energy efficiency for the first time after years and years uh, of talk about it. We're going to see greater growth around the the management of energy use um, and people tailoring their energy use around different uh, times and different sources of energy. We're going to see people basically using every scrap uh, of waste heat. Um, so I was, just, I was talking to friends last week and thinking about Long Annet. So Long Annet has generated 40 years of electricity. It's also perhaps generated more heat uh, in terms of energy output over that time and not a single unit of that heat uh, that's been lost has been used for any productive purpose. Uh, and that's something that has to change in the future. And then a sector that's getting everybody excited at the moment is the, is the area of energy storage. Uh, now energy storage is clearly going to be an important component of our future energy system. And I, I think it's, people are asking us, you know, what technology is going to win the race? And I think many technologies will win the race and they'll all be used in different applications. So we're going to see a growth in electrical storage, chemical storage, <coughs> uh, temperature storage, and hopefully also in pumped hydro storage. I think the long and the short of it is we are clearly in the early stages of a transition in the energy system. The detail may not yet be clear. Again, if you go back 10 years and you said we want to hit 50% renewables by 2020 or by 2015, it wasn't difficult to come up with the answer. We could all have done it in an afternoon in terms of what capacity of wind power you need, what capacity of hydro power you need. But as we look further into the future, we're having to make estimate forecasts for which kind of storage uh, will be deployed at scale, what will the cost of that be, how far, how far, how much further will the cost of onshore wind and solar fall, what does that do to the economics of uh, development and what does that do to the scale of deployment. So the challenges become more complex when you start to look beyond renewables as an end in itself, um, but the winds become greater as well. So we're in transition, we might not know the detail, I think we know the direction of travel, um, and I think there'll be a continued focus on minimising energy use whilst moving to an ever more low carbon mix. Thank you. Thank you very much, Neil. Many people think nuclear... The renewable sector the renewable in Scotland generate, Scotland. generate the, the... A question, a Hinkley point... We'll see in this country. ...aren't energy. going to give us that base provision that gives us the industrial uh, underpinning that we require.